Welcome back to Road to Fire. We're a family of three documenting our journey to fire, financial independence, retire early. Let's review our January passive income report. I'll outline our current sources and breakout, include our side hustle income as well with all real numbers like always, so please hang with me. Now January has been a blah month overall. Our passive income number came in about $1,000 lower than December and it was a complete buzzkill. How do you stay motivated month over month? Please share your tips below. Because we received our quarterly dividend and our large first month payout from YouTube last month, I was expecting a little bit too much for January. Can we redo this month all over please? Despite a rough start to our passive income report for the year, I am happy with how much side hustle income we made. Keep in mind we still have ways to go to hit this year's goal. So let's define passive income again. Passive income defined is earnings or money derived without being actively involved. Basically, this means that your income comes without your present. In contrast, active income, on the other hand, is the hard-earned money that you earn in exchange for performing a service. Imagine for a second that all of your income each month was passive income. What would you do with your time each day? First thing that comes in mind for me would be about a 12-hour rest or nap, or maybe adopting a solid 5.30 a.m. morning routine but I can't wait to get to that point where our passive income actually covers all of our expenses. So let's jump right into it. Here is our passive income report for January. Our graph is still a bit lopsided, but it's looking better than when we started. The goal is to get this more evenly spaced out in the future. So we first received $1,200 from rental income. There's nothing sweeter than rental income. We have been in this house hack for about three months, and despite the broken handrail, tight driveway, and more space to clean daily, things have been going pretty well overall. I have been warming up my husband about the idea of our next house hack, as spring is coming up so houses are beginning to pop back up on the market. Our second source is from Google AdSense, and I have this highlighted as its technically earned income, but I'll place it here for reporting and tracking reasons. We saw a $300 decline from last month, and to be real with you all, it was a blow to my ego. But I know YouTube is fickle, so I will keep at it. Hashtag seed time and harvest. Our total in this month was $248.89. Then we received about $30 from cash back. We had lower expenses in January, so this was quite a drop of about $70 month over month. I'm on the prowl for a better car, but I'm really too lazy to go through the entire process right now, but we've outlined our top three cards so far. For Ibotta, I got about $12.90 back, and for me, this is great because our grocery bill ended up being about $315, and so that's about 5% off. We use Ibotta solely at Target, as that is where we get all of my son's snacks for the week. So number five is interest in our Capital One savings accounts, and that came in about $10. One thing is for sure, Get as much as your money out of the savings account and into the market ASAP. It's crazy to see how little we make with over $34,000 in cash in these accounts. P.S. I'm not in the mood to change my accounts for another $10 as that's really a small ROI for me. Next is affiliated marketing. Okay, I really need to work on the segment and I keep on saying this, but last month we got $3.79 from a Robinhood referral. Yes, I know. I know Robinhood is the worst and I'm working to move our money, but it's not going to be easy. I am working with Webull right now, so check the link below if you want to get four free stocks. So our last source comes from dividends, and that was a mere 76 cents. So back in the day when I was a kid, hashtag millennial chats, this could get you some bubblicious gum from the gas station, but I'm not sure what you can buy for 76 cents right now. So drum roll, in total we received a little over $1,500 in passive income in January. Not bad, not great, not stellar. I'm always shooting for a little bit better each month. So we are now tracking our side hustle income and I want to add this here as well. So in January, we had a goal of making $600 or more in our side hustle income and we did not hit that, but we did bring in the following. We sold two items on OfferUp and that made $70. I absolutely love this app as it's so simple to use. I do have a few other items up, but I'm not budging on the price, so I'm not getting a lot of traction so far. Those items are solid, so it's just a matter of time. So number two is surveys, and I shifted surveys into the side hustle side as it's not true passive income. Lately, it's been requiring a bit more effort or active involvement. I got about $10 to $20 per survey last month, and so I earned, keyword earned, $45. I then worked on a partnership on my blog, and that brought in about $80 overall. So in total, we made $195 from side hustles. 
You can add in Google AdSense over as a side hustle as well, but I'm placing that in passive income. Either way, it all goes to the same pocket. So decent start for side hustle income, but our annual goal is to get to $15,000 this year. So we have some grinding to do. Check out our first passive income report from August of last year. We brought in a total of $216.70. We had some similar sources as we have now, but the line items have increased over time. You can see that we had no true side hustle income back in August as our W-2s were our main focus. 30% of our passive income came from surveys and 48% from Google AdSense. Wow, what a shift since then. Our biggest change or adjustment is that we now have rental income coming in consistently. I am beginning to love the idea of more rental income. I might still be in the honeymoon stage, but it's working so far. One thing to note is that our Google AdSense income here came from ads on my husband's sites and not from my YouTube channel, as I just got monetized in December of last year. Funny thing is, I see we started the whole drop shipping thing, but haven't really put effort into it. We might need to jump back into that again. It's really refreshing to see how much things have changed in the last six to seven months. It's hard to see the changes in the day to day, but don't discount small beginnings. So we are narrowing our focus this year when it comes to creating new streams of income. I felt that last year we tried several different things and are finally becoming to see the things that are working well and things that aren't. I have to be real with myself. I am not the most entrepreneurial person, meaning I don't think I can create new digital projects, products, courses, coaching offerings, or so forth. It just isn't something that comes to me easy. But in 2021, we now have a clear and focused approach to increasing our passive income. So here's our passive income strategy for 2021, which is focused heavily on three areas. Numbers one through three are locked in and already in motion. We set our investment goals for the year, we will purchase one more house this year, and we will continue to invest in dividend paying stocks. So that's already set and locked in. Now four and five is where we are putting our sweat into. I ditched blogging because I just can't. Kudos to anyone who has a blog, but I am not a writer, nor can I maintain a good schedule to keep it going. I do still own my URL as I can't part with it yet, but it's on the back burner for me. So number four is now my husband's businesses. He has a drop shipping site, apps, and a podcast platform that is finally completed. He has been grinding on that for a few months, so fingers crossed that he's gonna get the traction that he deserves. Now, number five is affiliated marketing. I keep saying this, but there is growth here, and it's my personal goal this year to find a program or partnership that works best for me, and one that I believe in, so more to come in the future. Now, we still have number six open for now. I won't say we're closed completely with new ideas, but we are not searching for anything new right now. I'm working now to find the right balance between work-life balance, which is a more of a qualitative goal versus a quantitative goal. So I think we're okay with our overall strategy right now. So for any new stream of income, I have one key criteria. It has to be something that I can do remotely or at home. I want to be present with my son and near him as much as I can while he still wants to be near me. So some of the other traditional forms of side hustles, such as Instacart, Uber, DoorDash, etc., are all great. And my husband has done a few in the past, but they just won't work for me. I have to be able to do it on the computer at home in my PJs so I can be able to spend a lot of time with my son. Now in the future, we plan to relocate abroad for at least half the year, and I don't want to create anything that won't be sustainable in the long term. So most millionaires have seven streams of income. I absolutely hate hearing this quote as it's not prescriptive. What seven types of income do they usually have? What forms are the most common? Yes, I know profit, rental, and capital gains, but what is the percentage breakout and how did they get there? It's harder than expected to create long-term sustainable streams of income. I mean, right now we have, let's just say, seven streams, but just a few of them are truly sustainable. I can't live off interest and Ibotta isn't really going to pay the bills. So what is the right breakout? So here are the seven most common types, not streams, but types of income. You have interest income, earned income, dividends, profit, royalties, which is like impossible to get, rental, and capital gains. Keep in mind, capital gains is something you get after you sell your stocks. Now, right now, if we're going to be really realistic, we have three types of income that help us sustain our life. Our W-2s or our earned income is number one. Our dividends, if we decide to sell, can sustain our life, so that's number two. And then our rental income is our third sustainable option. What we are really missing is profit income. This is not my forte, but my husband's, which he has a clear roadmap to. 
But if you've ever started a business, you know that the first one to two years is all about grinding and making money comes much later. So at the end of the year, I would love to add another star to this chart. It would be nice to have more types of income sources helping us sustain our lifestyle on a monthly basis. So here's our income report for February. I will link our budget video here if you want to get into the details. But the plan is to increase our passive income to about 20% of our total income by the end of the year. And this will come into effect once we get our second rental and begin bringing in more profit income. We are too heavily weighted on our W-2s and that's a bit scary. Don't get me wrong, we have stable jobs, but our company has no loyalty to you. Always have a backup plan because you just never know. So next month, I'm hoping to cross $2,000 for both passive income and side hustle income. That means our side hustles need to bring in another $600 a month, which is our monthly goal. It's a stretch goal for sure, but it's what makes it fun. My husband is grinding night and day on his businesses and I need to match his energy. At the end of the day, these things take time, so I have to be patient which isn't my strength overall. Now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Until next time.